So what you're looking at is us being shot from the perspective of the new Sony NEX FS700 camera. Mm. Let's uh, go back to our normal camera so we can show the good folk at home what the thing actually looks like. Okay. Jason, I guess the thing that, that, that first struck me about this camera is that, like, looking at it physically, this, this looks weird. Like, I don't know what to make of this. I don't really quite know how to hold it. But um, that is, of course, it doesn't have any lenses attached at the moment. Mm. Um, this uses the Sony E-mount lens system, so you can buy it as a package with a suitable lens, which looks like this. And now with the lens on there, you flip the screen open, uh, you've got a handle to hold it here, you can zoom and focus. It all sort of starts to make more sense. Mm. So it still feels like it's somewhere between a, a full motion picture camera, uh, you know, large format stills camera, and it still feels odd in the hand. It, so. it does, mm. it does still feel strange in the hand, but you know, given the results that we've been able mm. to get out of this thing, uh, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that there's, there's real XLRs with phantom power, so you can plug microphones into it. You can record real audio, um, and you've got the option as well not as not only to use the uh, the Sony lenses, but indeed if I take this lens off, pop the cap back on there, mm -hmm. and then I take this, which is actually a, a Canon L series lens uh, with a third party adapter on it. I'm doing this wrong, aren't I? There we go. So I've now got a completely radically different lens on there. Now, when you change lenses and you're using the third party stuff, you can't autofocus. You can mm. actually autofocus with the Sony lens, which right. is great. Um, but you do get this focus assist thing going on, which is basically uh, in areas where, where the camera detects, you know, sort of nice contrast changes, mm -hmm. it, it highlights them in red. So it makes it very easy to focus. Yeah, great. And the results you get out of it are, are pretty impressive, particularly in slow-mo. Yeah, well, we haven't even talked about the slow-mo yet. Um, mm -hmm. Just in its own right uh, as a camera, which, which gives you, it, it's a large image sensor, so it gives you those beautiful cinematic effects. But if you run it in, in slow-mo and super slow-mo, yeah, you get some incredible effects. Um, Here's a, a video we took of uh, just turning a tap on. <laughs> you wouldn't think that that would look quite as exciting as it does. It really you, does. You can actually see the meniscus of the water mm. kind of dancing around. And the, the stuff that you can pull out of this in slow mode really is quite, quite incredible. Mm. Um, uh, the downside to, of course, shooting 800 frames a second is you need a lot of light mm. to do it. Mm. Uh, and indeed, the, the second piece of footage you're seeing here is of the filament of a light globe. Yeah. There's a lot you can do with this. Yeah, particularly at this price. I mean, th this is bringing that kind of, especially that kind of slow-mo result into a market point that it's it's not really been available in before. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Look, I, I, slow-mo cameras, uh, especially at the kind of frame rates this does, um, I, I mean, you look at something like the Phantom Flex and uh, that, that does in the order of thousands of frames a second, but it's also, you know, sort of somewhere between 50 and $150,000. Mm -hmm. So, uh, great camera, but great price. Um, this is not quite a Phantom Flex, but for for my purposes, this this is damn well close enough. Hmm.